Hi guys, today we're looking at the DS1517 Plus NAS by Synology, and if you don't know what a NAS is, the acronym actually stands for Network Attached Storage. So the DS1517 Plus is a 5-bay NAS powered by a quad-core CPU with AESNI hardware encryption engine. Now it does come with quad 1 gigabit LAN ports on the back, and it can also be installed with a 10 gigabit network interface card if you need to, or you can actually use a dual M.2 SSD adapter card. On the front of the unit, we have access to five disk trays, LED indicators, a power switch, and one handy USB 3.0 slot. On the reverse of the unit, we have four LAN ports, the PCI expansion slot, power socket, and two eSATA ports. Now these actually allow you to expand the unit up to 15 drives using two DX517 expansion units, which are sold separately. There's also three USB 3.0 ports and two fans, which are controllable on a software level, not hardware. Now to actually get started with the unit, you actually want to remove the disk trays simply just by pushing the front, releasing and then removing the tray. The tray is actually a screwless design, so to secure the hard drive in place, you want to remove the two side clips, push the drive into place and then put the two clips back in. Now once that's done, just simply push the tray back into its original bay and then push the front until you hear a click. Now what Synology does actually provide with this particular unit a set of keys allowing you to lock the tray in place which will help prevent people accidentally removing the hard drive by mistake and believe me that can happen. After you've got all your drive inserted you can then actually install the operating system which is called DSM. Now this stands for Disk Station Manager and this is actually proprietary to Synology. Now installing the OS is as simple as just following the on-screen prompts that you'll actually encounter after locating the NAS in your network. Now if you need to find the NAS in your network you can either download the Synology Assistant tool from their site or actually just use their web assistant, which is just by typing in the address find.synology.com, press enter, and then it will search your network. Now, if either one of them actually fail, I recommend trying both methods just to actually make sure you can find it in your network. Now, I'm actually migrating from a DS916 Plus to this DS1517 Plus. So the steps you're actually seeing on screen are actually the migration steps, not the basic installation steps. But anyway, once the software is actually installed, you can then begin to use the NAS as, well, basically however you see fit, as there's actually hundreds of options available within the package center. I mean, if you want it to actually host a website, or use it as a file server, media server, or even a surveillance device, well, you can do all of that. Now, this unit comes in both two and eight gigabyte RAM variants, and if you actually find that this isn't enough for you, you can actually expand it up to a maximum of 16 gigabytes, and that will give you the extra performance you may need. So to upgrade the RAM, all you actually need to do is to make sure you've powered off the unit, remove the actual power cable itself, and then just turn the unit onto its back, and on the bottom of the actual unit, you can open up the tray using a standard Phillips screwdriver, and this will actually give you access to the RAM modules, which you can easily swap out for more, and you will need to install it in pairs. So in terms of its performance, Synology actually claims that it can reach up to almost 1200 megabytes of sequential reading and just over 500 megabytes of write speeds in the 8 gigabyte variant, which is the one I'm actually using today. So if you were to put the 10 gigabit NIC into this unit, you'll actually be looking at read speeds of a whopping, well, over 27,000, and for write speeds you'll be looking at 19,000, or just over. Now the end result will depend on your own environment, including the type of hard drives they actually use, but if you're interested in actually attempting to get the quoted speeds, then Synology do actually publish their own test environment on their performance pages. So all in all, if you're actually looking for a NAS to host your data, whether it's personal or actually professional for business use, then I would actually say look no further than the DS1517+. Plus. It's capable of being so much more than just pure storage, you know, and it also provides easy to use software along with their own mobile and tablet applications. And if you do have a problem, there is a free technical support service available as well, both on phone and email. Now this type of unit will come at a price which is a bit more premium than some of their lower units, and from the prices I've seen, it's about 750 to 800 pounds, depending on where you buy it at the time of making this video. Now, this doesn't include the cost of hard drives, of course, but people do offer a package kind of deal on some of their sites as well, so do check out them because you can save yourself a bit of money. But if you don't need something this high range, then obviously do check out the Synology product page, as they do actually provide a load of different types of units to meet every type of need for every type of user. 
So for everything that you actually get with this device, I'd highly recommend it. And if you want to actually try out their software as well, go onto the website because they actually provide a live demo which allows you about a 30 minute session to try it out for yourself. And if you're interested in that, I'll put a link to that as well as all the other pages I mentioned in this video in the description box below. But for now, my name is Jay, this is Texway. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.